Hey guys, I am Jay Green and I am super excited that I've just been on the online prosperity show with Prosper. So what we talked about today is how to reverse engineer your life so that you not only have the business of your dreams, but you're able to create the life that you desire and you deserve. So I hope you will join us to learn all of my tips and tricks on how to be a five dimensional human. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the chief life engineer herself, Jade Green. Jade, how are you doing, my love? I am amazing, of course, and thank you for having me on your show, Prosper. Absolutely. Now, obviously, if you're watching this show right now, you would have an understanding that we're always bringing you experts in their own realm. And this heavyweight bombshell that we going to be listening to for the next 20 30 minutes jade is a high achiever okay so at 21 with less than a thousand dollars jade actually made a radical life-changing decision to actually be happy you can tell she's effervescent she's full of energy she just came from bali and she's offering us this time um of her day to give us this interview right now now, she is equal parts entrepreneur. She's also a girly girl, as you can see those blonde locks on her, and part tomboy. I'm yet to see that part there. And for the last two decades, for, for what I've heard, Jade has actually been steady, rising, and building an international reputation and breaking all the rules that you can think of. Now she's a transform transformational coach um, with Mind Valley, and she's also a certified trainer with them she not only does that she has been um nominated as or she's been honored actually as startup daily's top 50 women entrepreneurs under 40 and she's received two bronze international stevie awards for women in business and she has been the female entrepreneur of the year now jade i could go on and on and on did you actually still remember any of these accolades wow no Except for the tomboy part. So remember a minute ago, we were talking about the UFC, Conor McGregor. <laughs> and I have, my, I have my girly girl top and earrings on and I'm wearing a pair of Converse's on my feet. And uh, the hair is like this because I've come from surfing. So yeah, we like to, we like to do, uh, we like to keep an equal mix. So we're a whole balanced person. Absolutely love it. Now tell us a little bit about your story. I mean, obviously I did dwell on when you started off when you were 21. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I literally, I grew up in a trailer park, um, just south of Byron Bay, um, was in a trailer park for nine years and then I lived in a scout hall. It was also condemned, uh, and a trailer at the back of my family house until I was, uh, about 18. And so I had lots of jobs while I was at school as, as well as bringing up my two sisters from when they were two and a half and four and a half. Um, they're a lot younger than me. They're super cute. And then I decided that I didn't want to just be stuck in this tiny little town. And I thought I was going to go to the big smoke. Have you ever heard Darwin classes the big smoke? Well, it's the I first thought, time. Yeah. So I thought I drove three full days pretty much nonstop to get to Darwin for my 21st birthday because I was going to the big city. Yeah, no. Uh, not such a big city. But amazing opportunity. I ended up starting my first couple of businesses there at 21. Um, so I, I thought I was going to be in Darwin for two weeks and I was there for four and a half years and had two companies and bought a house and did all that sort of stuff. And that really started my entrepreneurial journey 19 years ago. Um, so it's a while since then. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much where it all started and obviously I, thousand bucks was all I could save to move my entire life and go traveling around Australia, uh, pack all my stuff in my station wagon. But then that's where it all started. Absolutely beautiful story right there. I can literally relate, Jade, because coming in from Zimbabwe with nothing but a backpack full of hopes and dreams, I had a few things that motivated me though. What, what is it that would have pushed you to really um, want to change that aspect of your life having grown up, um, you know, in, in, in the yeah. trailer park of the third. So really didn't, it wasn't super cool not having a car growing up and we lived in a little town. So we'd have to like hitchhike to 
go to the hospital or the dentist. And at one stage, my sister broke her elbow and we had to hitchhike her to the hospital. Um, and so I didn't, I didn't want to have that life when I grew up, um, although I had a super cool childhood and dad did the best he could. But I wanted more. Like I couldn't go on school excursions when everyone else went to the snow or got a new school uniform. Um, I... I didn't get to do that. I had to stay at school or I, I just didn't get that stuff. And I, I didn't want my sisters to have to do that either. Um, and I didn't want that to be, if I had a family, what my life would be moving forward. So that was a real motivator. So actually when I moved to Darwin, one of my sisters came and lived with me to, to do year 10 and 11 and 12 um, so that I could try and provide her with a little bit of a better um, situation and so she could go on school excursions and do stuff. Um, and that was probably a driver. But also my dad had been, um, back then it wasn't called an entrepreneur. He'd built businesses and had unfortunate things. We went through a GFC and lost um, everything. So we, we went from trailer park to being quite quite well off in like a couple of years. And then the GFC hit and lost everything, like completely lost everything, everything, everything. So we didn't even have a trailer at that day. Um, so I have seen dad go through that and, and not be influenced by anyone's rules. So I think that was a driver as well going, well, if he can come from nothing, he was literally joined the Navy when he was 13, nine months and, and um, was in, in the merchant Navy. And then he worked a lot in Africa. He helped um, serve with the Red Cross um, through the Congo to try and save some of the kids and stuff. And then came to Australia with nothing but a backpack. And I don't even know if he had a dream. <laughs> um, and build a life, I was like, well, if he can come from that, then anyone can do anything. Um, so that was probably my real drivers. And I just, I've always had this feeling, and sometimes it's a burden of, I need to live up to my full potential and anything less is a waste. So it can be quite burdensome and can cause anxiety as well. But that's my driver in terms of, okay, I can't just sit around drinking cocktails all day <laughs> lovely lovely um but i've earned that today i've been going i've been going since 6 a.m and meeting with my lawyer but it's about about understanding that balance as well because otherwise that pressure to step up and always live at typical a type personality have to achieve everything all of the time then yeah you'll hit burnout too Absolutely. Well, um, I mean, on, on behalf of everybody else that's watching here, I suppose they would be saying the same words as saying, uh, you should thank your dad for the service and also thank your dad for the inspiration and the motivation that has brought you uh, to where you are right now. Now, with all the accolades that you have uh, won, we were joking earlier on that I was going to introduce you like a heavyweight <laughs> entrepreneur in the corner here. Yeah. Um, what, with your best what, Bruce Buffer voice. <laughs> absolutely absolutely now had you to start all over again what is the one mm -hmm. thing that you would go back and and want to do correctly um that's interesting it would hmm, what would i do that's a really good question um a lot of people say, oh, yeah, I wouldn't go to school or wouldn't do this. I didn't do any of that shit in the first place. So I can't really say undo that. Um, I would probably say not feeling conformed. It wasn't at the beginning. when I when, At the beginning of my career, like when I started those first couple of businesses in Darwin, I didn't let anything influence me. I was just doing my thing and I didn't give a F about anything. But then I moved to Sydney and I started working in companies and I started going, real competitive nature and buying into what I now call the Gary Me Gary V mentality and the hustle of new black and where sleep deprivation is a badge of honor. And I won, I got number, I got number 46 on startup daily's top 50. So next year I have to be like at least number five. And I got bought into that cycle of vanity metrics and keeping up with the Joneses and, you know, unless you're half hustling more and dying more and hurting more than the next entrepreneur, then you're not surviving. You're not, you're not thriving. And so what I would say is it wouldn't be advice to my younger self at 21. It'd be my advice to myself at probably 
30, 34 and going, hey, life is for living. It's not just for grinding. And making sure that you create a business that serves your soul's true purpose on this earth and not just about getting the right investors, getting on the right list, winning the right awards, turning over a certain amount of money. Like think about the lifestyle that you want to live because all the money in the world, like ask Jobs. When Jobs died, he didn't lay there going, oh, damn, I wish I had more money. He went, oh, shit, I kind of screwed up that whole family, friends, life thing. Like I can't get that back. You can only leave this world with emotions and memories. So you want to take them with you. And so what I would say is business is not – Building businesses isn't all about the revenue. Think about the profit margin because this is where I see too many people get caught up and I got caught up thinking about that top line, making that vanity metric, that number, rather than thinking about what the profit line could be and what else I could do to make to squeeze more profit so I could have more life. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you so I'm just... not saying don't push hard and hustle and, and get shit done, but just get it, get it done for the right reasons and make sure that you remember to live while you're doing it. Absolutely. I, I think that's the best advice um, ever because if you're not going to be uh, productive, if you're not feeling well, you can't do well. So, you know, the mm -hmm. amount of uh, yep. letting go and letting it be would definitely mm -hmm. uh, propel yep. you as an entrepreneur. Now, yeah. Uh, Roger James Hamill will tell you health is the new wealth. And without your health, you can't create wealth. So make sure that, and that goes for mental health as well as bodily health. Absolutely. Now, you have become a facilitator of numerous programs. What is your <laughs> sort of, um, what would people come to you to learn most and what would they walk away with? Yep. Okay. So what people will come to me for most is transitioning from being a one dimensional human, which is usually just focused on business or just focused on one specific area of their life. And entrepreneurs specifically can get really good at like grinding down on their business, but the rest of their life doesn't come. So relationships suffer, their learning suffers, their health suffers, their adventure, their life, living life suffers, and their spirituality suffers. So people would come to me because I've sought out to work with the absolute best of the best in the world around mindfulness, meditation, being living a soul's true purpose and spirituality combined with business. And how they can too intertwine to make sure that you are, I call it becoming a five dimensional human because my little blonde brain can't like deal with like 11 dimensions. That's like just too far for me, but I can get five dimensions, which would be business, relationships, wisdom, health, adventure, and spirituality connected to source. And that could be whether you believe in God and that's your spiritual side. It could be the universe. It could be, I don't know, some cool looking toad in the garden. If that's your God, then all good. But making sure that you are well-rounded and that, that you are living connected to that. Absolutely. You would understand. You did mention Gary V a little bit earlier on. Like uh, a lot of people that just hang on to what he preaches and don't um, look into some of the things that, you know, he does with his family are all just yeah. always on. All right. And yeah. they end up become, becoming that one dimensional person. What sort of yeah. words of advice would you give to somebody who is not just letting go and telling mm -hmm. them that what you see is not exactly what happened? Yeah. This and dude, I was there. Like I, I got my, I, I did my Snapchat with Gary V and I got him to sign my computer and I was so excited. And I was like, I literally was sleeping two to maybe three hours a night like living that Gary V grind. Um, but yeah, they, he doesn't talk enough about how much time he actually gives his family. Yes, he's earned that time, but he spends a lot of time with friends and family. It's a high value and he doesn't talk about that enough, I don't think. Um, but I think I've got off topic with the question. Um, what I would say is really think about if your job that, how old was Jobs when he died? Mid 50s. Mid 50s, yes. And you've, right? Okay, cool. You've like changed the friggin' world with your stuff that's that's one tick that's awesome but he wasn't laying going oh yeah i'm totally satisfied with that it's we're we're humans and our souls are here having this human experience for connection so you need to be making sure that you're thinking about that connection 
and what the true purpose is. Like, what do you want to look back when you're, when you're dying, when you're actually done with this life, what do you want to not be saying, oh, shit, I wish I did that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's a big driver for me in terms of going, I don't want to ever, like, this is why I went to Egypt. Like, I don't want to get to dying stage and go, I really, I always wanted to see those pyramids. Like, wow. sort it out, go. Like, did you need to read those extra hundred emails? No, get on the plane and go. <laughs> <laughs> Hire a VA, give somebody else a job. You don't need to keep all of the money for yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I mean, some people might say, um, you know what, Jade, you've got it all. You've, you've been working ever since then. I've only just started this hustle. So maybe yeah. I can't really listen to that. You already have all these accolades. I want to get to where you are. What sort of, yep. um, you know, advice would you um, give yeah. to somebody like that in, in order Beautiful. for them to, yeah. You are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, but that doesn't mean they need to be physically in your presence. So even pod shop, podcasts like this, videos, you can choose where are you taking your inspiration and your guidance from. Books, podcasts, radio shows, friends, mentors that you've remote in. They don't have to be physically in your presence. But you need to think about that, num that number, if you're the sum of the five, who it is. So if you know that you've got some friends and they're off, maybe not behaving the best way, I'm not saying you have to get them out of your life completely. You just shrink the amount of time and influence you take from them. And you go, okay, cool. They're my party friends. So when I look at my spectrum of five dimensional human and I look at adventure, they're my adventure friends. But they make up one sixth of my time. They don't take up five fifths five, six of my time and only have one from my mentor. You, you balance it out and you think about where do you want to gain your inspiration from and drag your, your knowledge from. So think about that and where you, can, where you can get the resources from to form that. Think about setting goals that are actually not influenced by the bullshit rules of society. So, you know, government says do this, school says do that. Like the schools, don't get me started on the school system, especially in Australia. Um, but life isn't about go to the best school, go to the best university, get the best grades, be a doctor or a lawyer or a, sorry, um, or a engineer. If that's not what you want to do, like don't do it. It's a waste of time, energy, money, and resources. Do what you want to do and then do it to your best of your ability. So don't squander that ability. So yes, hustle. Yes, grind. Yes, put the time in, but also remember that the best creators and the best workers allow themselves to recharge their batteries. If you put a rechargeable battery in something and let it run flat out nonstop for a week, it's going to be dead at the end of it or it's going to be a bit quiet. You put it back in to recharge, bang, and it does its job straight away. So just using that analogy for yourself going, okay, pat on the back. I've busted my ass this week. I've done five days solid of like really good at my absolute best. Like I really pushed the limit, but now I'm going to blow off steam on the weekend. I'm going to go jump out of a plane. I'm going to go surfing. I'm going to hang out with my friends, whatever it is that you need to do. And I'm not saying it has to be weekends. Your weekend might be a Wednesday, but you just take some time to actually reconnect to what you want to do on this earth. Because I can tell you right now, your soul didn't come here wearing this meat suit to sit under fluorescent lights and wear a and suit all day long <laughs> <laughs> i can imagine <laughs> you're absolutely right about that well so obviously i mean we might have uh, somebody sitting in the audience right now and they're watching this video on their smartphone and they haven't skipped us yet um and they're really <laughs> sitting at the edge of their seat and wondering how can i be like jade or how can i get a hold of you what's the best way that people yep. can get a hold of you there jade so I'd say one of the great ways to, to learn more about me and to see what I've done is jump on my LinkedIn profile. So my LinkedIn profile is just linkedin.com.au forward slash Jade Green AU for Australia. So all my social to that because I push out content on there like my 5am club or my thought of the day. So when I'm reading books or going to classes, I, I'm an absolute learning junkie. Um, I'm like taking snippets of things and I like to reshare that. So that's a great place just to get some inspo of where else you can learn stuff. I do tips and stuff on there as well. 
but you can connect with me through everything else. Um, you can jump on the website, but that's kind of like company website. I'd say jump on those socials, Jade Green AU, and get a feel for it. And then just ask me a question. Like if you're like, oh, I really want a book on spirituality and how to connect to my why, what would you recommend? I'd really like a book on productivity and how to systemize my business. What would you suggest? I can be like, okay, go and read Rockefeller Habits or get Vern's new book on scaling up or, okay, you need a bit of a kick in the ass and hard shake reality check. Go check out Lisa Nichols or I can kind of give you some direction. So don't be afraid to ping me a message. Absolutely. Absolutely. This has been fantastic. Um, I mean, we could sit here and talk about everything else that you've done and everything else that you uh, can do for people, but I think I will put all those uh, links that you've given us uh, in, in the comments below or on the screen mm -hmm. so that people can actually yeah. um, get a hold of you and learn quite a lot. All we just really wanted was to get a glimpse of who are you, um, you know, behind the scenes and, you know, um, have, have some, you know, time to understand what actually makes you tick. Now, if you've been watching this yeah. show right now, there might be a few things that you might have picked up um, as to how Jade has become uh, who she is, a well-renowned entrepreneur who's helping other people to actually uh, be, do, and have either a business that's profitable and enjoyable or a happier existence like she has turned her have life. Have both. Have both. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Now, I know we were um, holding you from uh, sipping your cocktail. Now you <laughs> definitely can go ahead and, yes, exactly, like you said, <laughs> great stuff thank you so much jade for your time today thank you so much Rafa. it was wonderful being on the show and hopefully we've inspired and enabled a few people to take the next step enabling we have enabling we have thank you so much <laughs>